The first time I heard about Cleanshot X, I thought the same thing as you. How can a screenshot app be possibly worth 30 bucks? But after giving it a shot, mostly due to the nice 30% student discount, I have to admit, it's totally worth it. So let me show you pretty much everything that CleanShot X has to offer. Okay, so once you install CleanShot X, it's going to replace all of your basic shortcuts that you're used to on your Mac. So let's say that I wanted to do a basic screenshot. I'm going to hit Command Shift 4, which is going to get the area tool out. And as you can see, it has the same crosshair as on the default Mac, but it also has this nice little zoom window that I think Apple should definitely add. It's super useful, especially if you want to just nail a corner like this and you can really zoom into it. I'm going to take a quick screenshot like this one and it's going to show up in the bottom right or the bottom left depending on what you have configured. Now these little pictures come in many different sizes that you can customize but I like just this small one and you have a few options that you can do with this right now. You can either close it, copy it to your clipboard so you can paste it somewhere, you can save it directly to a folder, you can pin it which I will show you in just a second, you can also upload it to their killing shot cloud which you get one gigabyte of uploads for free and once you upload Upload it to there, you can share a link to someone and directly give them their screenshot. Or you can also pay 10 bucks a month for unlimited storage. And the very last thing that you can do is annotate the screenshot, which is kind of like the main feature of this whole app. But let's get back to the pinned window that I wanted to show you. So once you hit this, it will show up with your screenshot and now you can do a few things. First and foremost, you can just position it on your screen and this will always stay on top. So you can do some things on the background, like for example, if you're writing something, you can pull up your notes on the side and just reference your screenshot over here. You can also lock it with this old lock up here. And now if you need to access something behind the screenshot, it will just go away and you can access all of your stuff. Now you can do two more things with this pinned screenshot. You can just scroll up and down on your touchpad or with your mouse and adjust the opacity, or you can adjust the zoom level with your touchpad by just simply zooming in and making it really large or zooming out and making it super small. If you want to take this pin screenshot somewhere else, you can just grab it down here and just plop it, for example, on your desktop and it will just add it to it. Now let's get to the main feature of this whole app, which is the annotate menu. This will open up your screenshot like this. And the first thing that you can do is actually adjust the crop on it. So if we select crop over here, it will pop up with this window and you can just crop it down. So I just wanted this instead of the main menu over here. And that's okay. I can just hit crop and we're done. Now, if I want to adjust it, it will actually remember the section that you had before. And if you for some reason need a specific aspect ratio, you can just select it over here or type in a resolution right here. Also, you might have noticed that there is a color option. And most of the time I just set it to transparent. And now when you want to extend your screenshot or just move it about like I just did, you can just select it like that and it will add some space to it. So now when I do crop, it will actually give a kind of like a border around it. But we are not going to need that. So I'm just going to set it up here. And as you can see, it just snaps into place. If you don't want it to snap into place, you can just hold down command and this will turn off the snappiness or you can just turn it off down here. If you want to adjust both edges on the sides at the same time, hold down option and this will do that. The second thing that you can do here is take another screenshot. So I'm going to do that. Let's say that I wanted to add my dock over here and it will add it into the same screenshot. So you don't have to open up Photoshop or any other image editing program to edit to the same image. Now I can just move it about or just leave it down here, or I can completely get rid of it by just hitting backspace. And now to get rid of this portion as well, I can just hit back to crop and go back. Instead of adding another screenshot, you can also just do choose from file and add another image that you have already saved on your computer. Now this third button is where the magic happens. This is where you customize the background of your screenshot. So once you select one of these, which are just pre-made gradients, it will nicely position your screenshot in the middle, give it a nice little shadow and put the gradient around your screenshot. But if you cannot find one that really fits your screenshot, especially, you can also use your wallpaper a blurred version of your wallpaper, a blurred version of the screenshot, a kind of darker version of that, or your own image. So let's say that I go down here and let's use myself, for example, right there. 
And as you can see, it's now the background of it. But let's use a blurred version of my wallpaper just to set the theme. And you can also use just a plain color, but come on, nobody is gonna use that if you have fancy gradients. Now, these few options are here to customize the look of the screenshot in the background. So if you want to add some padding, you just adjust this. If you want some more inset, you can also adjust this. You can make the shadow way more prominent. Also adjust the rounded corners over here doesn't really seem to work with the screenshot that I have and hit auto balance. Auto balance is basically there. If you have a screenshot that's mostly just one color, it will kind of auto balance the sides to the middle. So if I, for example, open up my notes over here and I take another screenshot of my Swift notes like this and now open it to annotate it and I head over to the background section, choose a background for it and now hit auto balance, it's going to get rid of that extra space that doesn't really matter. And now as you can see, even the inset works really well. It probably didn't work on this one because it's just way too complicated around the edges. Now these last two changes are super useful if you're posting on social media. The ratio is basically there if you're posting on YouTube, you are probably going to use 16 by 9. So let's say this to 16 by 9 or if you're posting a TikTok or something, you can just place it on 9 to 16 like that. So I'm going to set it to 16 by 9 and now use the alignment tool to actually align it to one side. So this will just align it to the side and to the corners if you wanted to add something to it. Let's go through all of these tools. So this first tool is a smart highlighter. That means if it finds some sort of a text, you can see that my mouse cursor kind of adjusts to it. So I can just go through the text and it will nicely adjust it without going over. And I can also change the color over here. You can pretty much do this with every single one of these tools. So I can set it to something like green and now also adjust the thickness over here and go to, for example, recents, I want to highlight that and it's nicely highlighted. If you want to zoom in, it's as simple as just zooming in like that so you can really nail it. And let's go to the second tool, which is just a simple pen tool. So if you want to write down something, it will nicely smooth it out. The third one is useful when you're, for example, doing tutorials or explaining something to an older person maybe, and you want to give them step-by-step -step instructions. And you can just plop down one, two, three, and this will go pretty much to infinity. And you can also also change it from numbers to, for example, letters, A, B, C, D, or to these Greek letters. Now this fourth tool is kind of like an all screen highlighter. So let's say that I wanted to highlight this first file that I have right here. I will just draw this rectangle around it and it will black out the rest of the screenshot. And to make it a little bit more prominent, I can just go all the way up and it will just darken the rest of the screenshot. Okay. Let's now get rid of it. And let's say that I wanted to do the complete opposite. I wanted to get rid of this first file. I didn't want people to see it. I can just use this tool and blur it out. This will pixelate it and you can choose how much it will pixelate. Or you can go into the settings right here and change it from pixelate to blur. And there is a secure version of the blur or there is a smooth version of the blur. The smooth version is just a regular Gaussian blur that you pretty much find in every software. And the blur version is secure. So it changes up the pixels. So if somebody would have used some unblur software using AI to unblur your image, this one just makes sure they can't do that. And if you want to completely get rid of it, you can just use the blackout option and it will just place a black rectangle over it. Now, the next one is just simple text, but you have multiple choices of pre-made themes to choose from. The standard one is just standard text. So standard, it has a nice drop shadow and it will just look good. Now these other ones are pretty well done because they kind of like match the color of your text. So if I'm using a bright color, it's going to do a black border around it. And if I'm using, for example, purple, it's going to use a light color around it. And the same goes with all of these other ones. So if I choose rounded box, it will also be white. But if I choose, for example, turquoise, it will nicely match it with this light turquoise. And yellow, for example, is black. Okay, then we have arrows, which is probably the most used tool that you're going to use with your screenshots. And it simply puts down arrows. You can have these arrows right here, 
these fancy ones, which are just slightly different, or you can use these curved or double curved ones and just do an arrow like this. And when you click on it, you can kind of curve it like that if you want someone to change two things around. Now, these next four are kind of self-explanatory. It's just a line tool, a kind of like a ellipse tool, a rectangle tool, and an empty rectangle tool. And this last one is just your mouse, which will select stuff, move it about. And if you want to duplicate something, you can hold down option and just drag on it and it will duplicate the thing. If you want to lock in the axis, which you're moving this in, so let's say I wanted to duplicate this arrow right here, but I wanted to say on the same Y axis, that means I'm just going to grab it, hold down option and shift at the same time. And now I'm moving perfectly straight and I cannot really go in any other direction. If I wanted to duplicate it and move it to the side, that means lock on the X axis. I'm going to do the same thing, but just slide it to the side at first. And this is going to lock it in as well. Now, when we hit done, it's going to save it. And as you can see, it changed over here as well. You can hit Control C to copy it, Control S to save it, and Control W to dismiss it. You can also dismiss the screenshot by just sliding it to the side like this, or you can slide it down and just save it for later. Okay, so that's our first screenshot finished, but let's take a precise screenshot of this window right here. You can simply just go into your menu bar and hit capture window or the all-in-one option that I usually use, which is Control shift five, and it will open up all of the settings that you can use. As you can see, the basic preset is just the area that we used and we can just hit window now, and now it's going to prompt us to actually select a window of something. You can also use this to screenshot the dog, by the way, which is kind of like a window in Mac OS, but let's take a screenshot of this. And once it shows up, you have two options that it could now show up as. Either this, or it will already have a wallpaper in here. You can change this up in the settings. So when I open up the settings, we can go to wallpaper. And now here you have the option called window screenshot and just select the with wallpaper or the transparent option. The transparent option is really nice because now once you have this in transparent mode, you can add pretty much any of these gradients. But if you had it in the other mode, I will just quickly show you that. So if I go into settings and now select with wallpaper and take a screenshot of this one. So I will select window, take a screenshot. And as you can see, it already has the wallpaper applied to it. This is really nice if you just want some quick screenshots, but if you want to customize it a bit, it's pretty painful because it kind of remembers the wallpaper and then it just looks off if you're not using the blurred version of your wallpaper, for example. Now you can also do a scrolling screenshot. That means I will just select an area that is going to be moving. So for example, my window over here, and as you can see, it nicely snaps to the sides and I can select scrolling and now just hit auto scroll and it's going to scroll down and make a really large screenshot. It only scrolls down when your mouse is actually on the screenshot right there. If I want to stop, I will just move it out and now hit the done button. It will show up here and I can go into annotate and I can just look through all of my files that I have downloaded and again, go to the background section and I can even add a gradient to this one and use some arrows to, for example, show someone these two files. So that's the scrolling screenshot. And the next final one is a timer. That means if you, for example, need to quickly bring something into the screen without actually taking the screenshot yourself, this will just get a timer and then screenshot the area for you. So the last thing here is OCR. So if I select a text like this, right like that, and I just hit OCR, it will scan that text. And now when I, for example, go back to my notes, I have that exact text copied to my clipboard. A faster way to do this instead of doing this whole thing and then selecting the area is just going up here into the menu bar and hitting OCR. This will give you again the crosshair and you can just scan it like this. You can mostly use this to scan text from videos where you cannot really highlight them usually, or you can use this to even scan QR codes in videos so you don't have to use your phone for it. Okay, let's now move to recording. So I'm going to bring up this menu, hit recording over here. It's going to pop up with the recording menu. And as you can see right away, the first thing is my microphone. You can enable it, disable it. If you're recording already with an external microphone with your camera like I am, you probably don't need this. But if you're just doing some basic stuff, this will completely suffice. And it also shows you the volume that you're recording on. Now you can also enable computer audio, that means system sounds, 
Uh, the third thing is your webcam down here, and it's super useful with all of these settings that you can use to customize the size. So if I want a bigger webcam, I can just put it to large and it will be really big. I can move it around with my mouse, by the way, and when I click on it, it will go into full screen mode. I can also customize the shape that you have right here, or if you're on the other side, for example, you can flip the camera so it looks kind of weird now. So I'll just flip it back and you can use either your laptop camera, your iPhone camera, or pretty much anything else that you have connected. You can also show clicks in the recording. I will show you that in a second and keystrokes. I will also show you that in a second. Now you can also select an aspect ratio. So if I'm recording something for YouTube, I can go into 16 by nine and it will just lock me in so I can make it really large and this will be perfect for YouTube. Before I actually go into recording a video, I can also go here through some of these more advanced settings, like for example, the cursor and you hit options and now you can see a preview of it. For example, if you want yellow clicks, you can select it like that. If you want build clicks, you can select it like that. If you want to make it really large, it can look like that, but I like my sub look gray ones. So I'm just going to click OK and the keystrokes as well. This is what the keystrokes will look like once you press something. So you can adjust the position over here, for example, top left or something like that. I just like to keep it in the middle. And the most important part here is probably just to switch it to show only command keys instead of every single one. Hit OK. And now you can also customize the video. That means the resolution of the video. If you need just a small video for your team, then you can just set it to 1080p for example and your video fps and also the gif fps and quality so i'm going to go back now hit record video it's going to give me a three to one timer i can cancel it if i want to and now every time i click i will have this animation if i for example hit Control c it will go up here now if i want to end the video i can go here if i want to pause it here if i want to restart it here and if i want to delete it right away right over here uh, once i end it it will give me this window and as you can see clean shot x is pretty smart about it because it records the microphone and also your computer audio on two different tracks if you're a regular person this doesn't matter much, but if you're editing your videos, this is pretty helpful, especially if you have something loud going on on your screen. I can hit, for example, don't merge now, and it will pop up with the second window where I can adjust the start and the end of the video. I can adjust the resolution and the video quality for it to be good enough for actually uploading on YouTube. And now it will give me the estimated file size. And once this video is finished, it will just pop down here and you can do the same exact things as with the screenshot. Now I wanted to show you two last things about this app, which I found really cool. If you hit over to the menu bar and go into capture history, this will basically pop up a history of all of your screenshots that you did. And you can customize how far back it goes. That means one day, three days, a week, or even a month. And it actually separates them into all screenshots, videos, and GIFs. And the very last thing that I wanted to show you, which is super cool, is that you can do all of this editing stuff that we did to a regular screenshot just with your files that you already have on your computer. So if I just had, for example, to my download menu and I hit to this Bugatti, I can just open it up like this and now do a fancy background around this photo and maybe do some arrows to show some stuff and I can f switch to the fancy arrows and really show people what I mean when I say. So you can see the appeal how quickly you can get things done with just Clean Shot X instead of opening Photoshop and toying around for hours. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed and if you have some other apps that I should definitely check out, make sure to leave them down in the comments and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.